Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now talk about the respiratory system of earthworm. So we are done with digestive system and circulatory system. So now we know how blood flows throughout the body of earthworm and how food gets digested. Now the question is how the exchange of gases take place. However, I have already given a hint about it while discussing the circulatory system. So whenever I say exchange of gases, I basically mean how intake of oxygen take place in case of earthworm. Well, there are no specialized respiratory organs. As I already said, here in this case, they do not have lungs or uh, organs like gills. So there are no specialized organs. However, the gaseous exchange take place through their body surface. So this exchange occurs through moist body surface into their bloodstream. So oxygen enters through their body surface and they get into the dorsal blood vessel. So oxygen is picked up from the moist soil by hemoglobin which is dissolved in blood plasma and carbon dioxide is also released through body surface. Now the question is why is it necessary that earthworm will be able to stay only on moist soil? There lies the answer because wherever the soil will be moist, there will be water. So it will be able to get oxygen dissolved in that water. If the soil is too dry, let us suppose if the soil is so dry that there is no moisture at all, then the earthworm might die. Similarly, if the soil is too wet, even in that case, because there is too much of, uh, due to too much of water logging, the earthworm will again die. Therefore, what happens is when the climate becomes too wet, suppose it, during heavy rains, too much of rainy season, what happens? The soil is like fully clogged with water. During those seasons, you will often see earthworms start surfacing and they start coming out on the surface in such extreme conditions. You would have observed in your garden or in your houses that when it rains very badly, these warm like creatures, they start coming, you, you start seeing them on the surface. Whereas during normal days, you really don't see them on surface so much. I mean, because they are mostly under the soil. But now since the soil has become too much wet and they are not able to survive there because they are not able to respire there. So they start coming out of the soil and they are and we are able to see them on the surface. Now the question is how this exchange occurs, by what process this exchange occurs. This happens through the process of diffusion. Okay. Another important thing here to be noted here, how the earthworm keeps their body surface moist. Body surface is moist due to the mucus or the body fluid. So they keep on secreting some mucus, some slimy substance which has some water content and that keeps the body surface wet. Let us now talk about the nervous system of earthworm. So let us look at the nervous system. Earthworm has a well-developed sensitive nervous system. So when you talk about the nervous system, they do have uh, those kind of organs which are made up of the nerve cells and that can sense the input and then give appropriate reactions. And they also have some sensory organs. So we will discuss about them. Now what constitutes the nervous system? So what are the important parts of nervous system? Cerebral ganglia, ventral nerve cord, segmental ganglia. So these are the three important parts of the nervous system. Now ganglia is nothing but a, a sort of brain. I mean a, a very advanced ganglia or a completely developed ganglia came to be known as brain. So this is cerebral ganglia, ventral nerve cord and segmental ganglia. So we will quickly see where each of these are located. So when you look at the body of the earthworm, so the cerebral ganglia is located somewhere here, like this. And then throughout the body, you have a nerve cord, ventral nerve cord, somewhere like this. So this is nothing but the cerebral ganglia. 
This long cord which flows throughout the length of the body on the ventral side is known as the ventral nerve cord. And on the ventral nerve cord, for each segment, you have a segmental ganglia. Right? So this is pretty simple, the structure at least of the nervous system. Now let us look at their details, their function. First, let us talk about the cerebral ganglia. Cerebral ganglia acts as the brain. So it is somewhat like this. This is the cerebral ganglia. Then from there, you have the ventral nerve cord with segmental ganglia like this so this is cerebral ganglia this is ventral nerve cord and this is segmental ganglia so cerebral ganglia acts as the brain and it is connected to the ventral nerve cord so that you can clearly see in this picture Ventral nerve cord, it is a nerve cord that extends through all the segments on the ventral side below the digestive tract. Obviously on the ventral side, ventral side is the side towards the belly and it is located below the digestive tract. So just now while we were talking about the blood vessels, I told you right, there is a subneural vessel which is located even below the ventral nerve cord. So in the situation is like this, first you have the digestive tract, below the digestive tract you have the ventral nerve cord, below the ventral nerve cord you have the subneural vessel. So anterior region of nerve cord encircle pharynx forming a nerve ring. So now anterior region of the nerve cord, when you talk about the anterior region somewhere here, Right? So here, it pharynx will be there. Pharynx will be located somewhere here because this will be your mouth and all those parts. Then pharynx and then esophagus will start. So somewhere around pharynx, it is seen that some few nerves will encircle the pharynx forming a ring-like structure which is known as nerve ring. Now this is a characteristic of earthworm because these nerve rings are not seen in all organisms. Now cerebral ganglia along with other nerves in the nerve ring, they integrate together sensory input as well as command muscular responses of the body. So central cerebral ganglia alone is not the boss. So cerebral ganglia along with some of the nerves of the nerve ring, they together will command all the muscular responses of the body depending upon the inputs, the sensory inputs rather. Now the segmental ganglia. Each segment has a ganglia that controls muscles of that segment. So it is something like this. Uh, I, I'll give you a, an example from your school. Like suppose in your school, you have different classes, class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Now each class will have a class monitor. So what is the job of the class monitor? to control the class, to, make, to see if discipline is maintained in the class, to see if all the teachers are coming on time and to regulate all the activities of that particular class. But each class has one one monitor, but on top of them, there is a head boy or head girl of the school, right? Or you call it somewhere, you call it a school captain. So what is the responsibility of that person? To see the overall activities of the school for all the classes. So similarly here, segmental ganglia will control the activities of that particular segment. So it will control the muscular movement of that particular segment. But cerebral ganglia and the nerves of the nerve ring, they will control the mus mus muscles of all the segments. Right? You're getting that point. So segmental ganglia is like a class monitor and cerebral ganglia is like a school captain. So that is the difference between the two. So each segmental ganglion is well coordinated with each other to enable locomotion. So even in locomotion, like see everything is connected to one another. While I was telling you what helps the earthworm to, loco to move from one place to another. They are seti. Seti are S-shaped structure which, is, which are present in each segment. And the contraction and relaxation of the seti helps in moving the earthworm from one place to another. But there has to be a role of the nervous system also. Let us suppose, you will see, suppose an earthworm is there lying on the ground. You just touch it with a stick. What happens? It starts moving. Why? Because it could sense that input. 
the sensory organs could sense that input that okay something is happening then something decides there is also a brain in that earthworm which will decide that okay now i should move and then that order comes to the muscles for movement. So all this coordination needs to be done by the ganglia. So for, for each segment, that order is given by the segmental ganglia and as a whole for the entire organism, it is given by the cerebral ganglia. So that that is all about the nervous system of uh, earthworm. Talking about the sense organs, like um, like how we human beings have eyes, ears, nose, skin, all those are our sense organs. So what about earthworm? Well, here also the sense organs are located mostly on the anterior side towards the mouth side. They can't see but can feel the light intensity or vibrations on ground. So I mean, they do not have any specialized sense organs to see view things, but they can feel that. Uh, feel the light intensity right i mean whether it is dark or it is it, whether it is night or day at least they can feel that much difference but minutely they cannot see objects they can also feel vibrations on the ground so that's all they have so specialized not very highly specialized specific sense organs are not present okay but touch light chemical receptors present all along the body surface so see for earthworm their body surface is something which is like uh, multitasking body surface helps in absorbing oxygen that is it does the work of respiration body surface also acts as a sense organ because it can feel touch it can feel the light intensity it can also feel the presence of chemicals so body surface plays a very important role in the life of an earthworm okay thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again